Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to another Thursday Rough Cut. Today we're talking about the CPM 154 Carbon Fiber Kershaw Leak. This was introduced at SHOT Show 2017. Um, I was drooling over it. Some of you guys are drooling over it as well, especially some of you guys who are big fans of the leak. And speaking of the leak, I've done a review in the past of the leak. I think I showed off the uh, G10 S30V version of it uh, during that in that review. Uh, that one was a loner, so you know I never owned that one. But this one I did buy from Blade HQ because man, yeah, again, got to have this carbon fiber in the uh, collection. We're going to talk about carbon fiber, some of the reasons you might like it, some of the types of carbon fiber you want to be on the lookout for in regards to um, the knife you want to pick up in carbon fiber, uh, as well as also looking at a few other versions of the leak, just the ones that I happen to own. So. Starting off, looking at this version of the leak, we can see that we have a nice stone wash finish there. Very beautiful. We got some harsh light today. Sorry about that. I hope you guys don't mind too much. But really nice finish on the blade. Good edge grind as well, obviously. And that nice little sweep right here. Not every version of the leak has that. Some of them are more of a right angle. I'll show you that here in a second. But the ones that have this cool little sweep to it, aesthetically, just a really, really nice looking construction. You can see the, uh, the thumb studs, which also act as a, um, a blade stop on the frame. So what I mean by that is, in, in many cases, what uh, a knife will have is some kind of a stop pin right here to stop the, uh, the blade tang from, or the, I guess the back of the blade spine from going any further. Could be argued whether it's the tang or the spine, but in any case, it doesn't go any further because there's a stop pin there. In the case of designs like the Leak and a few others from Kershaw, these thumb studs actually act as the stop pin. Okay, they stop the blade from traveling any further against that frame, stopping it right there, and then locking in with the uh, liner lock in this case uh, to keep the blade in place. And how's the lock up? Real good, real good. How's the centering on it? Let's look at that real quick. Not perfect, not perfect, but not bad either, not for me. I'm not extremely picky as long as it's not going against and, and kind of rubbing the side of, um, of the liner there. And uh, for the money, I, I'm not going to complain too much. This is a USA-made Kershaw. Um, again, carbon fiber, CPM 154, just, just gorgeous. But uh, I'm happy with the construction of it, happy with the look of it. Full flow through? Nope, not full flow through. I knew that. A little bit of a backspacer there, as you see and that is uh, held in place by those three screws. So you can take, it that, take down and disassemble this knife if you want to. Um, safety on it, which I do use because, um, I don't know, I just tend to. And also the pocket clip is repositionable to here. I never reposition <laughs> these on the leak though. I always carry them tipped down. Uh, some folks are die hard one way or the other, gotta be tip up or gotta be tipped down. I'm very flexible on that actually. Kind of like my sodas. I mean, a, a drink. I, I'm a soda drinker, guys. I just am. It's just not. It's not going to stop anytime soon. But um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily a Mountain Dew guy or a Dr Pepper guy or a Pepsi or a Coke guy. I just whatever looks good and sounds good at the time, I go for it. So in regards to also uh, pocket clip position, it's uh, it's an aesthetic thing and it's also a functional thing. Whatever works better with that particular knife, I go with. And in my in my opinion. The pocket clip on the leak works best when it is positioned for the blade to be tipped down. That's just the way I feel about it. You are free to differ. That is the carbon fiber leak. I love it. 85 bucks at Blade HQ. Um, other versions of the leak come in between $45 and $50 um, on their website. And uh, some higher as well. Some of the higher end versions um, have a little higher price tag on it. But carbon fiber to me is tops. It's absolutely tops. It beats aluminum, beats the frame lock. This is, um, this. I don't think they can do better than this carbon fiber leak. Loving it. Let's get into a couple other versions of the leak and show you kind of what else is out there. Uh, number one is the frame lock version. Reason why? It's a frame lock instead of a liner lock. It's also quite a bit thinner. You can kind of see the difference there. All right, so if you're wanting maximum thinness in pocket, uh, perhaps even waistband, this is a really thin one to carry when you get into the frame lock version of the league. This may be my second favorite version, um, just because of the thinness and all the benefits that that adds. Obviously still has the safety on it, so that's very nice. Um, but, you know, stainless, it comes in stainless, comes in this black finish as well. 
and uh, that uh, the frame lock in general is just a real nice version. Slightly heavier, don't have the exact weight on them, but it is slightly heavier because of that, uh, that steel frame to it. Other versions, here's one, from, it's kind of a blast from the past. The Apostle P gave me this um, many years ago. I think I won it in a contest or something, I can't remember. And here's what I was talking about with that right angle grind, okay? So looking at, yeah, and that one's got it as well. But looking at these two, you can see sort of the difference there. That one's the, the one on the bottom's got kind of a curving sweep to it, and this one's got kind of a right angle grind to it. I don't know why there's a difference in those processes. Actually, I think this one is actually flat. That is flat ground. That may be what the indicator is. So maybe that curve indicates flat ground, whereas the right angle grind represents a hollow grind, which this has. Oh, huh. yeah, learn something new every day. Just had to point it out to you in order to see it myself. Anyway, yeah, Apostle P runs an awesome channel talking about knives, sharpening knives, etc. And uh, if you're way into knives, you're probably into his channel. But I got this from him a long time ago. So there that is. And one of the other ones that is definitely a favorite is this one in sand and black. Just for aesthetics, is just beautiful. Really good looking. Love the colors. I don't think I've even ever carried this one. I may have to change that. Yeah. Uh, no more virgin knives. Got to get them out and use them. Uh, there you go, guys. Those are my leaks right there. And let me talk about why I love the carbon fiber one so much. And again, why I think uh, there are certain types of carbon fiber to, that I really recommend that you look for if you're, um, if you're into or wanting to get into something, you know, some kind of a knife with a carbon fiber uh, aspect to it. And why there are other, or other types of carbon fiber scales and, uh, you know, um, handles or whatever that I would recommend you steer clear of just for satisfaction and, and aesthetics. So here, the reason I got into this one, the reason I liked this one so much, is it stays true to what I believe is the right way to do carbon fiber. And this is what I've been trying to talk about. As you can see there, this texture right here, this sort of grain that's going throughout the, uh, the handle scale is the same from top all the way down to the bottom. What that means is we've got true carbon fiber going all the way through that. That is the best, I love that. Uh, and I'll talk, about, talk a little bit more about why in a second. But when you get pure carbon fiber all the way through, in my opinion, that adds quite a bit of um, aesthetic value and some tactile and other value to it as well. Uh, so that is the case on this carbon fiber leak. Happy to see that. Let me show you a couple other carbon fiber knives. And I don't have any that don't match that or that are more of the peel ply. And that's kind of the other version of it that I don't like at all. Um, in fact, we'll show you this one to talk about that. Here is the Sage One from Spider Co. This one is also carbon fiber through and through. Again, you have to kind of look at the grain to get a sense for that and see, you know, make sure that that pattern stays the same from top to bottom. There doesn't seem to be any sort of a break in that grain. And that's kind of how you determine that it is in fact carbon fiber all the way through. Um, the Car uh, Spyderco came out with another version of the Sage with, I want to say their, uh, which one, which version was it? Anyway, another locking type. Oh yeah, it was the compression lock. They have the compression lock version of the Sage. Uh, and that one has the peel ply carbon fiber on it. I hate that stuff. Just hate it. Okay. And yeah, it looks good still too. It does still have a nice aesthetic to it, but it's, it's fake in my opinion. It's not, it's not the good stuff. And here's why. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this or capture this sound-wise. Probably not. But um, when you hold a knife that has uh, scales on it that are pure carbon fiber and you open that up, there is a sound that that makes that you don't get from G10, you don't get from other materials, aluminum, steel, whatever. There is a, an audible, resonant quality to that carbon fiber that in my opinion makes it, um, I don't know, it's just a sensory thing that puts it above uh, any other material in my opinion. So that's part of why I love carbon fiber and that's you know not just the visuals but sort of that audible uh, resonant sound that it makes. Um, and so that, that isn't present in that peel ply carbon fiber because it's got G10 underneath it and a thin layer of carbon fiber on top 
And that G10 deadens that sound, so any potential that carbon fiber had to make that really nice sound. Again, it's, it's subtle, it's not a huge, you know, I can hear it, I can definitely hear it, but it's subtle. But when you, when you switch to a peel ply, you don't get that at all, that quality is gone. And so all the things that I like about carbon fiber, minus aesthetics, are pretty much wiped out by that peel ply carbon fiber. And that's why I don't ever buy those types and why I don't recommend that you do either. Here's another one. This is the Spider Monkey. Spider Monkey, right? Bad Monkey's a big one, I believe. Spider Monkey's a small one from Southern Grind. Also full carbon fiber, different, different type of carbon fiber. And again, there are, some of them have a very clear sort of woven pattern to it. Others are a little more chaotic looking and cool. This one maybe fits into that. Um, very sculpted as well, as you can see there, uh, which is beautiful. Feels great in hand and again, has a cool audible kind of quality to it that uh, again, difficult to describe, but when you have it in hand and you open and close this thing, you know what I'm talking about right away. Well, slow deployment there, let's get it one more time. Yeah, I can hear it, I can hear it. And I uh, love that sound. A couple more here. This one is the Boker Titan Decade Edition. Again, that is full carbon fiber. You can see that grain right there. VG10 steel, if I remember right. Don't think this thing is available anymore, but um, nice one to have in the collection. Really like it. And lastly, a couple other things to introduce here. Haven't seen these on the channel yet, but you'll be seeing a lot more of this. This is a back pocket from Case. Okay, this is a Tony Bowes design that, um, that they've been carrying for a little while now. Then this one's in carbon fiber, and isn't that gorgeous? Carbon fiber and clip point with a nice little half stop there. So non-locking, but it's got the sort of half stop and uh, the, the retention to it that these sort of um, traditional folders have. Uh, covers being all carbon fiber, as you see there. A really nice, smooth walk and talk to it. Oh, very clear, very clear stops, powerful, strong stops on it. Really like the way this one feels. So um, as a traditional folder, this has got some great quality to it. Really liking it so far. Um, and I've been kind of getting into case knives after having met with them at SHOT Show 2017. They sent me a couple of their knives. I picked up a few more. And uh, you'll, you're gonna be seeing some of those in video very shortly, but I wanted to take sort of just a moment to sort of introduce at least that one, the carbon fiber back pocket. And there are others uh, that I currently have that I'm trying out that I'll be showing you soon too. This one in, oh, I don't wanna get it wrong, chestnut bone, that's what it is, smooth chestnut bone. This is a mini trapper, I believe it's a trapper. Yeah, mini trapper pattern with smooth chestnut bone covers. Uh, real good action on this one as well. Oh yeah, nice firm stop there. And uh, on the spay blade, oh nice. Yeah, good, smooth movement, nice firm stops to it. Love these traditional folders from Schrade. Uh, great affordable, you know, traditional folders that have terrific aesthetic to it. Um, good fit and finish for the money. Not perfect, certainly not perfect. Um, you, 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 to get the kind of perfection that a lot of people want, you kind of have to go with the, with the customs and they're, they're kind of hard to pick up, kind of hard to find and, and very, very spendy. But um, for the money you're gonna spend on these case knives, you're gonna get some great quality and uh, just some really sexy, really cool looking um, pocket folders, traditional pocket folders. So again, more coming from case knives in the future. But uh, this video isn't about case knives, it's about the carbon fiber leak, kind of what you ought to be on the lookout for in regards to carbon fiber in general, and why I think the carbon fiber leak is just tops, man. <laughs> this is the best one they've come up with, in my opinion. Loving it. Gonna be using it, we're gonna be carrying it. Uh, have used it, have carried it for a little while now. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of run, it kind of jumps in with the collection of leaks that I have that um, are kind of go-to knives when I want something small, something sleek, something sexy, um, unobtrusive, fast with that lightning quick, speed safe action and flipper. 
um, and something with some great potential to do fine detail work with. That needle fine point on it. Oh, so much more I could say about the leak, but we're going to try to stop it here. All right, guys, that's the rough cut for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Lay Boy Scout. We'll see you later.